They'll have difficult games, difficult days. They'll win some that you think that might be a tough one, and then they'll lose or draw in a game that you think there's a stick on and they're going to win. We just have to do what we have to do, really, and just keep winning our games. And yet, somewhere along the line, there'll be a disappointment for us, I'm sure. It's going to be really difficult to win nine on the bounce or ten on the bounce. So, somewhere there's going to be a disappointment. We have to recover very, very quickly from that, as I'm sure their managers will be saying to them, because the next game is all that's important. And, uh, and for us, it's, it's a preparation now going to Gillingham. What's that? What's that? What's that, Luna? What? What? You want to do what to Gillingham? That's right, back once again. We're going to have a preview this time, counting down to the next cup final for Blackburn Rovers when they head down south to take on Gillingham at their place. Before we're in the stick of the things, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, Bradley Dack heads back to his old place. You know, he'll know the old teammates. Maybe we'll have a word in Tony Mowbray's ear, tell him about some hidden team talks, hidden tactics and all that kind of jazz. But anyway, let's take a look at the match in a little bit more detail itself. It takes place Saturday, 17th of March at the Priestfield Stadium last season. Gillingham finished 20th in League One. Currently, the top goal scorer is Tom Eaves, and he's got 14 goals for the season, and they are managed by Steve Lavelle. Now, when the two sides met earlier in the season, uh, I think they were managed by Adrian Pennock, or something like that, I don't know. Over the years, Blackburn Rovers and Gillingham have met 10 times in all competitions. Blackburn Rovers picking up five wins, losing just the once, and the two sides have drawn three times between them. Over the last five meetings between Gillingham and Blackburn Rovers at the Priestville Stadium, they look like this. In fact, Rovers have yet to lose in the last five outings. So could they make it six out of six? Top of the screen there, Gillingham versus Blackburn. All uh, way back in 1975, it was a 1-1 draw in the old Division 3. And the bottom of the screen, 3-1 win for Rovers in the League Cup. And that was back in uh, 25th of August 2009. Now in the reverse fixture, Addywood Park, earlier in the season... Blackburn won that game and it ended up 1-0. So let's take a look at the starting 11. First and foremost, the hosts, Gillingham. This is how I think they will line up. Holly, Dole, O'Neill, Sukani, Irma, Wagstaff, Byrne, Martin, Hessenthaler, Riley, Eves and Parker. And I keep mentioning it before, but Bradley Dack was once a member of this team. So hopefully he knows the ins and the outs of some of these boys. Maybe we can get the better of them uh, twice this season. As for the statistics, Eves tops the pops with 14 goals. Parker is there with 11. Martin's got six. Byrne has got four. Into the discipline, irma has got 10 yellows. Bryn, or Byrne, has nine. Eves has nine. And O'Neill has five. Into the reds, Martin's got one red. Eves has got one red. irma has got one red. And Wilkinson has one red. The last five fixtures for Gillingham look like this. Oh, they've won a recent uh, uh, surge up the table. They currently find themselves 11th. And last time out, they beat Portsmouth, who have... Kind of tailed off a little bit. They now currently find themselves in 12th spot. Uh, before that, uh, Saturday 24th of February, um, Berry beat Wigan uh, at Gig Lane before Gillingham were held to a 1-1 draw against Shrewsbury at their place. All the way back Saturday 17th of February, Gillingham were held to a 0-0 draw up against uh, Walsall. And right at the bottom of the screen on Valentine's Day Eve, uh, Gillingham won away to Northampton. As for Rovers, this is how I feel they all line up. Ryan Ringold, Travis, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Evans, Smallwood, Armstrong, Dak, Bennett and Graham. It's been a, un it's been a, it's been a pretty successful formation uh, as of late. Um, goals from Graham may have dried up, but Armstrong has been taking over the mantle and been scoring goals for fun. Bradley Dak in that critical role that he's been playing in throughout the season in the middle of, uh, middle of the park has uh, been essential to our progress towards the top end of the table. Um, I'm not sure where Bennett's going to play, to be honest with you. I, I've put him here in a more, more attacking role, but he may end up partnering Smallwood in the defensive uh, defensive role, which he was successful with not too long ago. But he scored uh, a couple goals recently, so I'd like to see that continue. Let's take a look at the statistics for Rovers. Dak currently top of the pops with 16 goals. Graham's there with 15. Mulgrew's there with 12. And Dominic Samuel's there in fourth place with eight into the discipline. Smallwood there on nine yellows. Bennett's got eight. Uh, Evans has got seven. Williams has got six. As for Reds, Bennett's got two. Samuel's got one. Travis has got one. And hopefully we'll see the return of Travis. He was starting to take some real good uh, performances under his belt and looking like a real good first team player. 
Let's take a look at the last five fixtures for Blackpool Rovers. Last time out, they took on GB's Blackpool at Ewood Park and they won 3 0 before being held at home against second place Wigan Athletic. Before that, sat, uh, Tuesday, the 27th of February, Rovers went all the way down to London on that snowy day and they won 3 0. Before that, they were at Warsaw and they won 2 1. And then all the way back under the lights, Monday night lights, 19th of February, Rovers picked up a 2 0 win up against Berry. So let's take a look at some of the fixtures that happened midweek. This is hot off the press. First and foremost, Rotherham. Red hot Rotherham. Hit a bit of a, a stumbling block as of late. I, don't, I can't remember their last result, but they were beaten by Struggler's MK Dons uh, on Tuesday night. Before Wigan, that's right. It came down to the last second of the game before they snatched a winner up against Bradford City. That was one of the potential banana skins for Wigan. They, they, they jumped past it and they keep on going. And now they sit second spot. Five points behind Rovers. Uh, they are ahead of Shrewsbury on goal difference. So let's take a look at some of the fixtures that are going to happen this weekend. Uh, Wigan are busy with FA Cup action. So it's another chance for Rovers and Shrewsbury to add another game onto the calendar. Uh, Shrewsbury themselves got a tricky one up against fifth place Scunthorpe. So I'm hoping, I am hoping that Scunthorpe can do us a favour there. Meanwhile, obviously we take on Gillingham at their place. Another of game of interest uh let's take a look around rotherham up against northampton and peterborough who are back in playoff contention once again they take on oxford so let's take a look at the run-ins for the sides first and foremost the mighty blue and white this is our run-in a couple of little uh, banana skins i've highlighted a tricky home game up against bradford city Hopefully it's 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 going to be uh, not so tricky and hopefully we'll get the better of them. But you just never know. You never know. Simon Grayson is now the manager. Obviously, he just got beat today against Wigan. Other uh, banana skins, potentially MK Dons. You never know. They are strapping down towards the foot of the table. And I've also red ringed or yellow ringed the Charlton game at the Valley. You never know. It could be a banana skin, but realistically, we've got winnable games. But they're just, they're just stubborn sides that we have left. As for Shrewsbury, obviously the Scunthorpe game is massive. They're all going to be massive games. They've also got a couple of games to catch up on, uh, Blackburn Rovers. And they've also got the league trophy to deal with up against Lincoln City. That's uh, where Scott Wharton's playing his football these days. But Bradford City is also a game that they have to play down at Valley Parade. As for Wigan, their games are all over the place. Uh, their next league encounter will be Walsall at their place before they take on Berry at Gig Lane. They're scrapping their hardest. So I'm glad they're playing them now and not towards the back end of the season when they would have all, all but been relegated. So fingers crossed Berry could do us a favour. They've also got to take on Portsmouth. Now that game doesn't look too much too hard for them, but it's where Steve, or whatever his name is, Paul Cook, uh, used to manage. So there could be a little bit of a interesting situation uh, there, so hopefully Portsmouth can get their own back on their old gaffer. Now you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What did Tony Mowbray say shortly after the final whistle in an extended talking heads? Yeah, I think I think we we know our team. We know it. We need to be really solid and work exceptionally hard behind the ball, defend well. You know, that's ultimately probably what's led. You know, the goals against Wigan weren't great play. They were just making first contact from set plays and free kicks and corners and, and we did that exceptionally well today and I think if we do that we know at the other end of the pitch we've got the firepower to score goals and um, and it's not a bad combination if you're keeping clean sheets and scoring at the other end it generally means three points. Well the first one it was yeah it was a stodgy for staff it was you know they made it really difficult they've got some good players we talked before the game that uh, we total respect they have Jimmy Ryan can pick a pass Spearing's a very experienced footballer who can pick a pass and so it was a balance for us of whether we were going to just step right onto them and press in because as they showed once or twice they can pass around you and get it into their number 10 and we're in trouble so uh, backing off so it was a fine balance tactical game today I felt um, but we got it just about right in the end and um, and I think as the game went on we stepped on more to them uh, we, we got more opportunities and what was good was the flexibility of the team. You know, we lost Ryan pretty early on, and the, Elliot looked like he'd played all his life there, really, and, and ultimately culminating later on when we got to a back three because of their, they played two up front, two big lads at the end. We changed to a back three. He played like a right wing back and created the last goal with a brilliant cut back for Armstrong. So, a good day for us. The, the, the players are contented, happy. Um, I've said there's, there's nothing achieved yet. We have to, we've got a really tough game next week. We're at Gillingham, we're flying on a, on a 
difficult pitch from my first viewings of them and um, so that's a tough game but we'll enjoy today um, we will get the balance right of work and rest this week and we'll go to Gillingham next Saturday Bang in form at the moment Yeah listen the lads love him as well as an infectious character he's um, you know you think Harry Chapman's waiting on the, on the on the outskirts now as well it's it's all quite exciting really it, um, that we've got people who can score goals create goals and um, you know, I thought Danny was fantastic again. Didn't get his award. Bradley scored a goal, of course. Adam got another two. It's, it's just important everybody chips in. Antonison's will be chomping at the bit to get back on the pitch and hopefully score. Dominic Samuel needs to be on the pitch and score. It's um, but listen at the moment while the team are doing it, the ones that are getting picked and playing, we just have to keep going and see if we can keep knocking out victories. Yeah, we have to be careful of him. He is young. I, I'm not sure exactly how old he is. Is he is he 21 now? I think. Um, yeah, we have to be we have to be conscious that he, he can't keep going all. That's why we have to get the balance of rest and uh, recovery and get the right fluids in, on board and make sure that he's training the amount. Of, so you know, that's, that's my frustration is Nyambi today. You know, I, I couldn't see that hamstring coming other than he's missed a lot of training this week. And then we've had one day because of the snow on Thursday in the gym when he trained, and and that's resulted in a hamstring strain which I couldn't see coming. But um, we have to be careful with all our players and make sure the loads we're not overloading them because I'm driving them pretty hard on match days and demanding they work really hard and so we have to get the balance for rest and um, and work just about right and hopefully we're managing with most of them to do that. To be honest I laughed with his agent when we when we were doing the deal really and he, he was he was asking how many games were left and he thought he'd get 20 you see <laughs> and um, that's how I, think. I don't know how many he's got now but uh, listen he's, he's, he's a fantastic kid I know he can shoot off both feet I know he can he's sharp as a razor he threatens defenders in behind he can dribble with the ball strikers go through purple patches but then he might go 10 games without scoring and get frustrated and start snatching at things at this moment we just have to keep him going everything he's hitting is flying in and um, that's great for the team we need somebody who's going to score if it's not Bradley it, it, he did score today if it's not Danny you know it needs to be either Dominic or Marcus at this moment it's it's Adam and uh, we just have to keep going yeah it's, it's really disappointing for Ryan you know he's a young guy really again he's only 20 probably 21 I don't know how old Ryan is but he's just a young boy and this will probably be the first injury that will keep him out of playing first team football since I've been here I think so um, you know, that'll be a frustration for him. We we will have to see. It's he is a fast, dynamic footballer, and you know, let's make sure he we rehab him really well and make sure it's not a recurrence somewhere down the line because we don't want him to be because he's so fast and dynamic. You know, there's sometimes it's you can say that they have a lot of hamstrings. It's important now that Ryan is uh, is rehabbed really well. I'm sure he will be with our uh, medical staff. But um, but disappointing for him, disappointing for us. We'll have to find the solution for the team. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, he was really, really sore. You could see he could hardly move, he could hardly walk on the pitch. And I, you know, I've played football for 18 years. I've had fractured ribs and stuff. And that's what I thought it probably was because they are incredibly painful, fractured ribs. But um, I think he's popped back in. I think he's probably just dislocated a little bit in, in, you know, around the muscle in his in his stomach. And it's as he's laid down on the bench, I think it's popped back into place. So he's saying the pain's sort of dissipated and... and I've given him a day off and so I'm pretty sure he won't want to come in and get treatment. I'm sure he'll be uh, telling everybody he's fine. Um, listen, I, I'm trying to steer away from that personally and just concentrate on us. It's, we we have to just keep collecting points. We have to keep going. And, and as I said earlier in this week, I expect them to win all their games. You know, and, but Realistically, I think they've got to play each other. I'm not sure some of them might have to, but um, they'll have difficult games, difficult days. They'll win some that you think that might be a tough one and then they'll lose or draw in a game that you think there's a stick on they're going to win we just have to do what we have to do really and just keep winning our games and yet somewhere along the line there'll be a disappointment for us I'm sure it's going to be really difficult to win nine on the bounce or ten on the bounce so somewhere there's going to be a disappointment we have to recover very very quickly from that as I'm sure their managers will be saying to them because the next game is all that's important and, uh, and for us it's, it's a preparation now going to Gillingham there you go, what the gaffers have seen, but a little bit what I've had to say. What the fans have been saying as kickoff looms against Gillingham. Tom Phil said this on the BRFCS forum. This one has been flying under the radar a bit with all the other games recently. Banana skin? Oh yes, he's obviously in reference to the Gillingham game. Meanwhile, Arbitro said this. Oh, the joy of joys. Trevor Kittle is the appointed referee for this game. Arguably the worst referee on the national list over the past 15 years or so. The Boo Boo Zayla's going on in the background. That is Luna. 
keeping an eye on me. JH Rover said this, it's the inconsistency that annoys me against Wigan, arguably the biggest game in the league this season. Top of the table, Lancashire Derby, big crowd, live on TV. They appointed Jeff Altrincham, who had a poor game. Nevertheless, he has spent most of his season refereeing in the championship. So at the very least, you could argue his CV warranted getting the game, even if he made a mess of it. Then again, Blackpool then suddenly appointed Lee Proppitt to the job who is the regular Premier League referee. Now, against Gillingham, we have Trevor Kettle, who spent the most of the league season in League 2, with some time in League 1, and has been proven to be incompetent many times. So in the space of two weeks, we've done the full circuit of referees from Premier League regulars to League 2 regulars. Philip L said this, psychologically winning this one is going to be really huge now. If we do, we cannot be toppled from the top spot while we have the international week off. He's obviously in reference to the Gillingham game, but since the fact that Wigan have just beaten Bradford. Uh, 1864, Roverite said this. We'll take a simple 1-0 win. Pressure then lands firmly on Wigan whilst hoping Scunthorpe do us a huge favour. Green Rover said this. Disappointing that Bradford didn't hang on. As far as I can see, we are still top of the table. And if we can keep on doing the business every week, we will stay top. No reason we can't go to Gillingham and get a win. As every week passes, we stay top. The pressure builds on the other teams. We just have to focus on Gillingham and do everything in our power to get three points. And if we do it there, we'll be more doubt planted in the heads of Shrewsbury and Wigan players. All eyes on boys Saturdays in Gillingham. Come on, you blues. J.H. Rover back once again. Imperative that we beat Gillingham now. The other two keep on going. So we need to. Failure to get maximum Saturday will leave it right in Wigan's hands. And the way Shrewsbury keep going, we certainly can't rely on them dropping. As for D.E., he said this. Our only saving grace, as far as Wigan are concerned, is this fixture pileup, which could cause them to stumble. On the other hand, it's not been difficult for Wigan to beat most of the teams in the league at 100%. So they should be able to do so, even if they're at 80 to 90. Particularly as some of the teams may be in beach mode by the time Wigan play them. Seems like it's going to come down to us and Shrewsbury. And if so, us taking four points from six against them could become quite important. Worth remembering, we've got an 85th minute equaliser at their place to end the match 1-1. They'd be two points close to us right now, if not for that. Dak was the scorer. Of course. Now you've heard what the fans have had to say, you've heard what the gaffers have to say, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say, but just bin it. Just forget all about it, because what really, really, really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen this weekend between Gillingham and Blackburn Rovers. all i've got for you today folks if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button i keep you bang up to date with all things blackburn rovers i'm also on twitter and facebook if you want to check me out on the go so another monstrous weekend of football ahead for blackburn rovers and league one as a whole uh i'm looking on main man bradley dack the main man dackers to help get us the three points this saturday and i'm hoping i'm on hoping on hope that Scunthorpe do us a massive favour and take points off us, uh, Shrewsbury, to give us the edge going into the last, what is it, eight games of the season, something like that? Anyway, i got to get ready and prepare myself for the big one on Saturday. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, new to the channel. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.